everyone, welcome back to my channel. I am Neha Parasha, working in a healthcare company and based in Germany. This channel is a small initiative from my side to share knowledge about the pharmaceutical and healthcare world. As I believe education is the best gift one can receive or give back to the society. So with this, let's start today's topic. First, do you know what are orphan drugs? In this video series, we'll discuss what are the orphan drugs and rare diseases. How do the orphan drug regulations differ worldwide? For example, US, Europe, Japan and rest of the world. How did the orphan drug regulations evolve over time? And what are the regulatory pathways for orphan drug designation? We'll see all that in this current video series. So let's start. First, what are orphan drugs? Do you know that? So these are the drugs which are used to treat rare diseases. Now you will ask me, Neha, what is this new terminology called rare diseases? Why are you bringing this new term now? So don't worry, we'll talk about this term in detail now. First, let's break this term rare disease, rare plus disease. So these are the diseases which are found rarely, meaning it is found in very less or very limited number of people. Because these diseases are found in very less people, that's why these diseases are called or termed as a rare disease. Now you will ask me, Neha, how will you define what is less population or what is more population, right? Because it's very subjective. If the same question is coming to your mind, then wait, I'll explain you what it is. Health authorities of different countries have some specific numbers to decide if the disease is rare or not. For example, in US, the disease is considered as rare disease if the disease affects less than 2 lakhs people in US. While in EU, the number is different. EU does not give a fixed number, but it gives a ratio. In EU, the disease is considered rare if the disease affects 5 or less than 5 people in 10,000 people. That means only one person has that disease out of 2,000 people in EU. Okay. In Japan, again, this number is different. So in Japan, if the disease affects less than 50,000 people in Japan, then the disease is considered as rare disease. In Australia, this number is same as EU. That means five or less than five people among 10,000 people in Australia. In Switzerland, this number is again same as EU. That means five or less than five people among 10,000 people in Switzerland. Okay. In Canada, at present, we have no specific pathways for orphan product development. So that's why this concept has not been defined there yet. So you can see different countries have different prevalence threshold or number of people or in other word, you can say the occurrence of that disease to decide if the disease is considered as rare disease or not, right? In this figure, I have summarized the different countries, whether they have orphan drug law in place or not. And if yes, then what are the prevalence threshold or number of people defined in those countries to qualify that disease as a rare disease? So you can see that US has absolute number as do Japan, Singapore and South Korea, while EU, Switzerland and Australia have proportions and not a fixed number, right? So one disease can be a rare disease in one country but may not be a rare disease in another country because it depends on the number of people defined in that country. Therefore, it must meet individual country or reasons prevalence threshold to qualify it as a rare disease or not. So orphan drugs are those drugs which are used to treat such kind of rare diseases. But remember that prevalence or occurrence of that disease is just one factor to decide if the drug can be designated as orphan drug or not not. There are two more additional factors which is important to classify any drug as orphan drug. What are those two factors? Let's see them one by one. First, the disease must be serious or life-threatening. There is no appropriate alternative drug or treatment available for that disease. And even if the treatment is available, but your drug provides significant benefit as compared to the previous drug. So this criteria must meet that. Second, it lacks the financial viability, meaning the development and manufacturing cost for the drug is too high for such disease or condition that it's difficult for pharmaceutical companies to recover that money from the sales of that drug. So if there are no financial benefit, why the pharmaceutical companies will even develop the drug for such diseases, right? Is the same question coming to your mind? And that's the reason government provides some incentives or rewards to these companies for developing the drugs 
for these rare diseases so that they can promote such development right we'll talk about these benefits and regulations related to orphan drug designation in the next videos of this video series so now you know what is rare diseases to give you some kind of examples of such rare diseases for example huntington's disease fragile x syndrome gb syndrome crohn syndrome and the deckens muscular dystrophy these are few examples of rare diseases the drugs which are used to treat these rare diseases are called orphan drugs sure you might be thinking why we call it like orphan drugs are used to treat rare diseases why don't we call it like orphan drugs are used to treat orphan diseases so orphan disease is not a term which is used officially by most of the health authorities there are very few countries like australia and some of the rest of the world countries who uses this term called orphan diseases and rare diseases interchangeably but Please be careful don't use word orphan disease but use word rare disease as this is the official word used by most of the health authority US was the first country where the orphan drug program was initiated which was then also expanded in Japan US EU and other countries as i already mentioned few minutes back Canada currently do not have regulatory framework for the authorization of an orphan drug however this pathway is under discussions and evolving with time so the story how the laws related to orphan drugs developed in US is quite interesting so let's travel back to 1963 In 1963 Koffer Harris amendment to the FDC act was passed which forced the pharmaceutical companies that all the drug approved for sale in US need to be safe and effective so safety and effectiveness became the primary focus for US FDA now pharmaceutical companies had to do more studies to prove that the drug is safe and effective right due to which the cost of developing new medicines increased so pharmaceutical companies would like to develop drugs for those diseases is which can generate more business for them right so companies started focusing mainly on the common diseases which was not good because the focus of pharmaceutical companies on the rare disease was very less due to which patients group and public interest group for example nord which is a national organization for rare disorder they started influencing to raise awareness about the need of the drugs for rare diseases and as a result of it two episodes were telecasted on the tv show called quincy focused on rare diseases which encouraged the drive for legislation and as a result the orphan drug regulation was passed so this is how the orphan drug regulation was generated for orphan drugs in us there are approximately 300 million people globally currently living with a rare disease those people dealing with such kind of rare diseases needs medication we as a pharmaceutical scientist have this opportunity to make these patients life better right so let's work for this cause together so what are the regulatory requirements what are the procedures to develop the orphan drugs and how to apply for orphan drug designation how these requirements different throughout the globe worldwide and what are the similarity we'll see all these aspects in the next upcoming videos but before we end this video Do you know there is a concept called priority review voucher in US what is this and why is this voucher provided by US FDA if you know the answer then let me know in the comment section if not then don't worry we'll discuss that in next upcoming video till then let's stay tuned